MD admin to query the RAID sets that have been defined. So no need for you to memorize what was made where, although it doesn't hurt to spreadsheet or document these items in a spreadsheet. So that's RAID 0. It's up now. Because we've created all these partitions, everything's in place. Creating subsequent RAID types become even easier. So RAID 1, for example, instead of creating and initializing to level 6, which causes us to reboot, because the partitions are in place, we simply MD admin, create dev MD1, which is the next value up. And that is traditionally used to describe raid arrays 0 1 through n and this time the level is going to be set to 1 with the raid devices being two or more and an even number is desirable and required so two devices dev sd b6 and dev sd c6 will be the devices that are of interest again there are short options for these long options here like raid devices for example etc so this is the string that will make a new RAID device out of these two devices using RAID level 1. Again, RAID 1 is mirroring. So this is mirroring, and that means it halves the storage. So whatever you allocate, expect to benefit from half of the storage. So these two blocks are 2 gigabytes each for a total of 4, and if we we're using RAID 0, we would have access to all 4 gigabytes sans redundancy but because it's raid one we will have access to half which means we have redundancy but lose half our storage now, of course if you're working with larger order drives like two terabytes for example especially with storage being so affordable nowadays it's not such a big problem so let's md admin to create this new item and we'll say yes it's seen information before that's fine we'll just overwrite it because we have been mucking around with the partitions and now dev md1 exists which means the next step in the process is to overlay a file system using make 2fs type ext4 journaling turned on dev md1 and that will overlay the file system for us and we can even include everything in one command but so that it's clear in our documentation we'll just separate them as individual commands so let's make 2fs type ext4 and dev md1 and there it writes the file system information the inode information so that we can write files to it we'll then follow that up with a similar command but this time it'll be raid 1 instead of raid 0 and let's go ahead and put this in place as step C and that's going to be make directory raid 1 and mount dev md1 now there's no hard set association between dev md1 and forward slash raid 1 you can mount these raid devices wherever you see fit it's up to you but just to keep things sane we'll keep with this nomenclature so let's try to mount and echo the exit status. So mount should now reflect devmd1 indeed. So it's intact. And that means we can also write data. So sequence a million to raid one, one million dot text. Just a quick way of dumping some data or use DD with dev zero or some other facility, it doesn't matter. LSL dev md1 that's a device raid1 is where it's mounted and we can write to it df-h shows that md1 reflects half the storage of the aggregate storage because it's mirroring so that takes care of mirroring and this will survive of course the failure of one of its members so that's in place. And of course, we should also follow up with a modification to FSTab. We'll do it after we finish the RAID 5 volume. So RAID 5. And this will be, of course, striping, which is like RAID 0 with parity. And this level sacrifices the equivalent of one drive or partition. The equivalent storage, that is. So, MD admin. Now we have four 
partitions available across two drives that we'd like to include as part of the RAID 5 set. So we'll create devmd2, setting the level equal to 5, and indicating that the RAID devices are dev, and the order is unimportant. You can specify them however you see fit, but dev sdb7, for example, dev sdb8, and similarly on the SDC disk 7 and 8. We could use character classes as well. SDC8. This will include four disks and the RAID devices needs to be set equal to a number of disks. Let's not omit this. Equal 4. And this command will create a RAID 5 striping with parity array. So let's clear screen. And let's continue. Let's notice RAID level 5, part of an array, no problems there. DevMD2 has been created. That's fine because, again, we've made changes. So DevMD2 is in place. Let's overlay the ext4 file system. Make 2fs. Type ext4 DevMD2. Overlays the file system, which will take a little bit more time because of the size differential compared to the mirrored item, but nonetheless will generate it rather quickly. More inodes because more storage, more blocks are available. So now we should see that devmd2 becomes available while that runs. Let's just set up the next command and that is to make the directory RAID 5 and mount devmd2 in this directory called RAID 5 and then, if that is successful, sequence a million into RAID 5, 1 million dot text. And if that is successful, LSL RAID 5 to confirm that the items are there. And if all of that's successful, then we'll update the TCFS tab and test that they all mount. So, let's try this out. RAID 5, mount, so on, sequence, you name it. There it is. So mount should now show the RAID 5 volume mounted read-write. And df-h should show similarly. And at any time, if you needed to turn this into either of these volumes into a RAID or into a read-only device, you could just remount as read-only or use the MD admin utility to mount read-only. So now we see that 6 gigs are available now back to the notion of sacrificing the equivalent of one device. Each of the partitions that constitute this RAID 5 device are or is 2 gigabytes each. So 2 times 4 is 8 and we're sacrificing 1 so that gives us 6. So indeed the equivalent of one disk has been sacrificed to construct the parity necessary to recover from the failure of one of the members of this RAID 5 array. So we've set up RAID 0, as well as RAID 1, as well as RAID 5. These are the popular RAID types that you'll find in the wild, but certainly there are many other forms of RAID, combinations of RAID that are available out there. Now, insofar as FS tab is concerned, let's go ahead and update that. We'll simply position it in our tempfs section, so let's modify etcfs tab. And in this region, we can include a comment, RAID devices, and include their dev tree location, devmd0 through 2. And this will be mounted to forward slash RAID0, and its type is ext4. Default options, we could also turn on user and group quotas if we'd like. Let's include it, defaults, user quota in the event that we decide to check back in on quotas at some other point and the check order. Let's make it more even and then we'll copy and paste this or cut and paste this twice relabeling MD 0 to 1, 0 to 2, RAID 0 to 1, 0 to 2 and the rest is intact. Let's just add some space so it's visible. So now if we U mount the items at the root. Let's try to use character classes here. 0, 1, 5. Echo the exit status and then do mount. We should see that they're all gone. 
using, of course, character classes. And now if we mount dash A, this should attempt to remount those items. And this reads RAID 2, so the mount point needs to be fixed. Let's re-nano. MD1 mounted, seemingly. And the mount point for this one should be 5. So the two of them mounted properly. 0 and 1, not 5. That was my mistake. So let's remount all. And then we should now see 0, 1, and 2. All up with quota support and ready to be accessed. And of course, another way to test this is just to be sure that the data still exists. So let's LSL raid 0, 1, and 5 using character classes just to see that they still contain the original files. Indeed, 100, 1 million, 1 million are all intact. And of course, DFH slash raid 0, 1, 5 will reveal just those items indicating their sizes. And again, with RAID 5, you sacrifice the equivalent of one disk, which is what we've mentioned. So ETCFS tab has been updated to reflect those changes. So these RAID arrays will be brought up once the system has been rebooted. Now, as mentioned, MD Admin allows you to manage your RAID storage arrays, including extending the arrays in the event that you need more storage. For example, in the case of RAID 0, 1, or 5, you can extend the arrays or perhaps take disks offline because you suspect data corruption or perhaps some sort of physically noticeable error due to, let's say, lights blinking in colors that they should not be blinking in. So you can use MD Admin to take those items offline, providing you still have enough disks, let's say in the case of RAID 1 or RAID 5, to still allow the data to be accessible by your clientele, then you can take things offline, fix them, replace them with, let's say, new SATA or otherwise disks, and put them back into production and rebuild the arrays accordingly, which will take some time, just like it does with hardware RAID, but nonetheless works similarly and reprovisions that storage in its optimal form. So again, the RAID support within the Linux kernel requires that you spread your data, your RAID array data across two or more disks. Redundancy is provided in levels other than zero. A number of levels and features are supported. The common ones are zero, one, and five. With zero, it's like creating an LVM volume set. You simply aggregate storage and lump them together and present them as one coherent group. So we created multiple partitions to facilitate RAID, all of two gigabytes each. We rebooted the system and then used the MD admin utility with the create mode against devmd0 for the first item, set its level, included the devices, and then overlaid a file system. Once the file system was overlaid, we made a mount point, mounted it, confirmed it. We repeated that for RAIDs 1 and 5, changing the levels and the number of disks that are associated in the case of RAID 5, and then updated ETCFS tab as the final task, and tested auto mount. So test auto mount during system initialization. Once that's in place, your RAID's in place, and not until, of course, you experience trouble during the uptime or life cycle of your RAID device will you have to worry about the other feature sets. So next, what we'll look at includes management of these RAID arrays using the MD admin utility.